Well, I have a list of about five different things that if you don't run them in your ads, you're not really going to be missing out on much. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Elizabeth Green. Instead of giving you a core, this is how you need to start your Amazon advertising, I wanted to kind of switch it up because a lot of times I think that uh, people who first get into advertising really feel that if they're not using all of the options available inside the ad console, you're missing out on something. So what I want to do today is give you a list of the things that if you're starting out, you're not going to be missing out on if you don't use them right away in your ads. Now, it's not to say that I never recommend running these. Uh, it's definitely something we run in all of the client accounts we handle, um, but they're kind of what I would consider as layer on extras, not like first priority. So let's dive in and start going over our list. First one that I want to go over is placements. Now, if you're unaware, there's something called placement percentage adjustments, which allows you to give Amazon the option to increase your bid for either the top of search or product pages. Now, this can be super powerful and it is an amazing way to scale up an account, but often it can complicate your bid adjustments. And in the beginning, if you are really trying to dig in and figure out how to run your ads, um, anything that complicates a bid adjustment is going to make your life a little bit more difficult. And if you're not 100% sure how you should be managing this, I would just skip it altogether. Now, again, I said these things are definitely things that can be layered on to a well-rounded ad account and placement percentages, while they can be very effective, they also can make things very complicated. In the beginning, you should be hyper-focused on learning bid adjustments, learning um, how adjusting your bid relates to say your a cost changes or where you're showing up on the page and placement percentages in a lot of ways can completely throw a wrench into this and make it difficult to really understand what your bids are doing because you can end up with a whole bunch of adjustments kind of ping ponging in the background um, kind of you know, changing where your cost per clicks are in relation to your bid. And again, it can just complicate things. And if I'm being perfectly frank, most times you're not really going to miss out on much. The placement percentages are going to give you that extra little boost, but these are all things that are well, nice to have, aren't really necessary to running a really effective ad account. All right, so my second thing is going to be dynamic up and down bidding. This is another thing that can complicate bid adjustments um, and kind of leave you wondering what's going on and can also have wild performance swings in an account. Um, this is honestly a bidding strategy I'm not a super huge fan of. I think it has its place. It definitely has its place in specific strategies. However, again, it's not something you're going to be missing out on if you don't use dynamic up and down bidding. So if you're unfamiliar with this bidding strategy does um, is Amazon can up to double your bid if they determine that that particular shopper um, that is typing in the search for that specific one off um, bid auction is going to be more likely to convert on your ad. Now that sounds amazing. It sounds like, oh, why would we never use dynamic up and bid down bidding because Amazon's going to boost our bids for us? Well, they don't always get it right. Um, sometimes they can boost it at the wrong time and it can end up with a lot higher costs than maybe you want. And again, it kind of costs complicates the bid adjustments when you should be hyper focusing on understanding that first and then you know you can layer on these extra strategies afterwards the first two things that i touched on were things that are very specific to sponsored products um, and they're more kind of like layering on techniques that you would use on specific campaigns these other ones are going to be um, targeting types that again while everything has its place in an ad account these are not going to be your main focus um, when you're really honing in on core strategies. 
Um, so the first one is actually going to be category targeting. Now category targeting, again, be great. It can be effective for branching out. It can also be very broad and varied. And it also, um, you have the potential to do refinements, which is great, but it does add a layer of complexity to things. Um, and so category targeting, well, it's kind of great to gain additional market share. I would consider this more of like a layering on campaign. So if you don't run category targeting in the beginning, beginning of your ad account, again, you're not really going to be missing out on much. You really want to focus on those core strategies, those top campaigns um, and bid adjustments to really kind of tweak and refine what you have going on. The other thing you can get away without doing is going to be specifically to sponsor display and this is audience targeting. Now again, audience targeting is wonderful. However, um, it's definitely like a layering on and it does have quite a bit of complexity to it. There's different um, like audiences. You can refine the audiences. You can get really, really in depth with this ad type, which is phenomenal. Kudos to Amazon for giving us all of these options. However, again, it gets very complex and I would not consider this a core strategy in the Amazon ads. It's kind of like something you want to build off of when you have your core strategy in place and you're looking to expand the account somewhere. Definitely dig into the sponsored display audience targeting. In the beginning, you can hold off um, and then again, just focus on those core campaigns. My last two are going to be two other targeting types in sponsored brand ads that yes, they are effective, but they can get somewhat complicated to manage. And so I would just completely hold off on them. Um, the first one is going to be sponsored brands, product targeting. Now product targeting can be very, very effective. The issue with sponsored brands, product targeting is that while we are targeting ASINs, um, the sponsor brands product targeting for the most part will actually pull keywords. And while there's nothing wrong with this, um, again, can add a layer of complexity to the management, mostly because for whatever reason, um, in product targeting, although it pulls keywords, you can't negate keywords or search terms. You can only negate ASINs, which Again, so if you have something popping up that is not related to the product because that keyword has been triggered through a competitor, maybe they have a slight different variation, maybe there's something in their SEO that triggered a search that's not relevant to your product, you can't actually clear that search term in the sponsored brand product targeting ad. It's quite frustrating to be honest. You can focus on bid management here, but again, as this ad type gets a little bit more complex, um, it can be a little bit more rough to manage. I would just hold off on it in the beginning. Again, um, you can run those sponsored brands um, keyword targeting ads, no problem. Uh, but I think you're not going to be really missing out on anything if you hold back um, until again, the account is well built out and you're like, what's next level? Do sponsor brand product targeting, but I wouldn't consider that first. And then my very last one, which is actually something that we don't run in, I would say probably about 90% of the accounts that we manage ourselves is going to be sponsored brand broad match keywords. Now, this is another um, match type in the sponsored brand ads that kind of works a little bit different um, in the sponsored brand ads than it does in the product um, sponsored product ads is the fact that for broad match keywords in sponsored brand ads, they almost function like a automatic campaign. So you know when you have sponsored product broad match, if you say uh, like you have the search um, the keyword you're targeting was water bottle, you would have to have the two words water and bottle somewhere in that search term for it to trigger. Um, that's not the case with a sponsored brand broad match keyword, unfortunately. So it doesn't have to have any of the root words in it. Um, for it to, you know, kind of ping, it just kind of sees what it think is related. So it can work very well, but oftentimes it can get 
out of control really, really fast. And you can end up targeting all of these things that you don't really want to show up in your ads. And it's, sometimes it's a bit like playing whack-a-mole when you try and you know garner all the negative keywords and throw them in there. And it can end up being just kind of messy. Um, it's possible maybe to just run these at a low bid. But again, I, I wouldn't focus on this, especially in the beginning. Um, it, it might be something to layer on. There is another little known match type, which is a modified broad match. If you come from the Google world, you've heard about modified broad match. It's just putting a little plus symbol um, in front of each of those individual words that you want to specify have to show up in the um, triggered search term. Again, that gets a little bit more complex and you can probably do just fine with exact and phrase match. Just hold off on the broad match for the sponsored brand ads. And again, all of these, you're, you're not going to be missing out on much. You should be just fine running with that. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I definitely can do a video on what I would consider core strategies and core campaigns to run. Um, we definitely can you know, go over that, but I think it was helpful sometimes to recognize that the things that really aren't super important to a core campaign strategy, because oftentimes you'll hear so many people going on about sponsored display, audience targeting, and all of these great targeting types to it, and you feel like if you're not running it in your ad account, you're going to be missing out on a whole bunch of extra sales, and you just might not have the budget to really branch out and fully round out your ad account at the moment, which is perfectly fine. Again, just to reiterate is placements. You'll be fine if you don't mess with placements. Dynamic up and down bidding. If you never use this bidding type, you probably could be good. Stick with dynamic down only or fixed bids. Um, category targeting in all of the ad types, sponsored brands, sponsored product, and sponsored display. Great to use, but you're really not going to be missing out on a whole lot, I don't think, um, if you kind of hold off on that ad type for a bit. And then the sponsor display audience targeting, again, nice to supplement, but you'll be just fine if you hold off on that ad type. And then the two um, sponsored brand targeting types of so the sponsored products and the broad match in you know targeting and sponsored brand ads if you hold off on those you're going to reduce the complexity of uh, how you have to kind of go and manage with negative keywords and bidding um, and again you can get away with the other targeting types and be just peachy with the sponsored brand ads so hopefully that was helpful as always if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below i'm happy to answer those if you want to hear me spiel about a lot of this stuff you actually can go follow me on linkedin i'll put the link down below to check me out there. Um, I've actually been putting out almost daily um, content on weekdays over there that you might find interesting. And if you find this video very informative, I'm going to be trying to put out a lot more like this. So feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks so much.